Well, hello there, everyone. Bobby D here, your host of the Heart of the Gallup podcast. Thank you so much for logging in with us today, whether you are listening in your earbuds on your phone or watching us here on YouTube. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Bobby D. Like I said, I am a fundraising auctioneer, an MC, a event consultant, a professional speaker. I wear many, many hats but I don't really wear hats because I don't want to mess up this hair. But uh, anyways, it's so great to have you with us here today. And today we're going to be talking about a very popular subject that I get questions about all the time. And today I had this very exact question. Client said, Bobby, we have this artist who has wants to create a piece of art for us for next year's gala. What do you think? Well, I was like, it depends. And that's, again, my total typical answer of, of everything. And I had given this part with this client uh, the advice of where there needs to be some conditions that are in place to make sure that your live auction item is a great live auction item. So let's just do a couple of definitions here real quick. So what is a live auction? Live auction, you have an auctioneer on stage, there's a live auction item, whether it's a piece of art, whether it's a piece of jewelry, whether it is an experience, whether it's a bottle of wine, something like that in which the auctioneer will be doing the fast talk up on stage, $2,500, 26, 27, 28, 29, $3,000. That's a modern style auctioneer. And you may have a British auctioneer on bid 2,500, oh, it's boring. But anyways, that's a live auction. And then sometimes you'll have your volunteer auctioneer who is horrible, don't use them, hire a professional, don't chance your event. Anyways, so live auction, we're gonna be in the audience, in the ballroom, selling particular item, of whatever it is. And live auction items, uh, they need to be, a, a, have a wide appeal to many people that are in that audience, a wide appeal to your donors um, that are there. So let's talk about some good auction items and then we'll talk about some not so good auction items. And then we'll kind of talk about that gray area that's 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 in between there. And that's the depends area. <laughs> well, they all kind of depend. So. Great auction items. So a great auction item, uh, live auction or silent auction item, is an item that many people want that is really hard to get. Uh, and the best case is what I like to call uh, creating or identifying in obtainium. And in obtainium is an item that you can't get anywhere else except for the night of that gala. And that item uh, didn't come to fruition uh, except for the contacts uh, that your board members, donors, committee members, volunteers, staff personally have and can create some really, really, really cool things. Um, one of my favorite auction items I have ever sold was a day at Vanner Media. You get to go hang out with Gary Vaynerchuk and go see around the offices and whatnot. And like, I can't just go down to Vanner Media and be like, yo, Gary V, let me in. I'm a fan. No way. You got to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody and then maybe you can get in. Um, or a behind the scenes tour of Amazon. Like, that's a great one. Uh, a cave tour of a uh, a winery in Napa. Like there's another one. Uh, so many different things that are out there uh, that you can create that are experiences. Experiences sell the best. Uh, now uh, you can have travel experiences where you can travel to far off destinations or even staycation in your own community. Uh, here in New York, uh, we have a city that's, you know, 20, 30 miles away, best city in the world. And there's lots of opportunities there for live auction items. But it's hard to sell live auction items that are in New York City to fellow New Yorkers unless they are really, really cool. Uh, one of the most popular items that we've been seeing, especially in the last five years, is Rayo's Italian kitchen, uh, Italian dining. And Rayo's uh, is very, very famous for their sauce and for all of the food that they have. But what they're most famous for is for their waiting list. It's like two years to get on uh, and to have a reservation at Rayo's. So what ends up happening is, is there's individuals uh, that go to Rayo's and they set a, a standing reservation. Let's say every Thursday night at 930 is your reservation. And what will happen is sometimes they'll donate that Thursday night to an organization in which the organization will then auction it off and sell it for 10, 15, 20, 25 thousand dollars. And uh and 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 the buyers aren't buying the food, they're just buying their opportunity to be able to go to Rayo's on that Thursday night uh at 9 30. So that's that's one example of an item that New Yorkers absolutely love. But a stay at the plaza, it's like, yeah, I'll sleep in my own house. Uh, you know, a trip out to the Hamptons, they're like, oh, my friends have got some. So 
auction items are really come down to your uh, kind of your area specific. Now, if you are Midwest, West Coast, Southeast, Midwest, everybody does want to go to New York City. And that's a great time. Go to Times Square, go see the top of the Empire State Building, you know, ride the subway, go shopping on Saks on Fifth Avenue, all these different types of things. And for individuals that aren't New Yorkers, are like, that's amazing. And I would love it. And New Yorkers are like, that's just another day in the city. No big deal. We eat hot dogs and pizza, but New Yorkers really don't. They eat bagels and yummy things. So um, that's just an example, again, of being area specific, but creating an experience. Now, when you're talking about like far off travel, uh, maybe going to Mexico, maybe there's a house in Portugal. Uh, there was a donor that had donated a house in Portugal. How cool is that? And it's their private residence. And, and that's an opportunity to be able to uh, stay in some types of properties that you, again, would never have an opportunity to stay in, or you would be able to, but then it would be through Airbnb or VRBO or whatever it is. And, you know, it, you would still have to pay for it. But instead of paying Airbnb and the owner of the property, you're now donating the money to the nonprofit. And then in exchange, you then get this wonderful experience. Um, so those are some examples of some really unique auction items that have uh, you know, a broad appeal to the entire audience. Now, uh, again, there are some individuals that, uh, especially now here post-pandemic or stage two, pan whatever we're in, is that the auction buyers uh, might not be traveling internationally. However, they will be traveling intercontinental or maybe just in the United States uh, or maybe even in North America, whatever it is. But that is, is a personal uh, decision from your donors. And it again, it is that broad appeal that's out there. So now Napa wine tour with uh, a Tesla and a driver and a chauffeur and stay at the beautiful Fairmont and all of these different uh, types of uh, item or experiences built within this wine auction lot uh, is uh, a great example of that experience that does that broad appeal. Napa and Sonoma have always been some of the best auction sellers and trends that we've seen in the past five, 10 years. Uh, and there's some new wine regions that are coming out. You know, Oregon's got a great wine region. Uh, the Southeast has some new wine regions that are popping up. And even Arizona, who would have thought that Arizona would be a wine destination, but it's getting there. So this example brought appeal, um, bourbon tasting in Nashville, uh, beer tasting in Chicago, uh, behind the scenes of uh, a, you know, baseball stadium, maybe in Boston, you get to go see the big green monster or things like that. Again, access uh, in obtainium opportunities that you wouldn't find anywhere. Those are going to be your great live auction items. Now, the value of live auction items are going to be, you know, quite a bit higher. Now, don't let the value of the live auction item dictate whether it is in the live auction or not. And then the next question you now have is like, well, Bobby, how do we know what is a good live auctioneer or a good live auction item? Well, talk to your live auctioneer, your professional live auctioneer, the person uh, that has experience pointing at myself uh, in live auctions uh, and knows what is selling and what are the trends are and, and, and what would make a great live auction item. So again, it really comes down to experience and in Obtainium, can't find it anywhere else, leveraging the connections you have. Now, there are some galas or some uh, different events that have a particular theme. Maybe it's a night in Paris and you want to go to Paris and have a trip in Paris and whatnot, and your committee or donors or whomever don't have access to someone that has a property in Paris or an apartment building or whatever. And there are different vendors that are out there, uh, and we have some great vendors that we work with, and I'm going to have some of them on the podcast here in the next few episodes, uh, but they do provide consignment travel experiences. And what consignment is, is let's say your trip to Paris, and you get to go uh, hang out at a, at a French bakery, and you get to go have a French meal, and you get to go into the French countryside and drink French wine and all of the things that this is put together by a travel destination company. And let's say the value of this is $10,000. That would be a retail value. What this uh, organization does is they have special relationships with all of these different vendors that are there, and they're able to make the cost to the nonprofit much lower than what that retail price is. Uh, so let's say if it's worth $10,000, maybe the 
wholesale or the nonprofit price is 6,500. You put that into the auction, you throw it up for bid and it gets to 8,000, you're making 1,500. It gets to 9,500, you're making 3,000. Uh, but that's an opportunity to, to bring in some items that you wouldn't be able to find anywhere else. Working with consignment smartly uh, can work out really, really, really well. Now, don't just throw consignment in to throw consignment in because um, there have been times where uh, we sold a trip to the Azores. Do you know where the Azores is? Yeah, it's right there in between the eastern coast of the United States and Portugal, like smack dag in the middle. It's like the European Hawaii. Um, I didn't know this until I had to sell it at an auction and nobody else in the room knew where it was either because nobody else bid on it. And it was a consignment package and it is a minimum price to purchase this item at an auction. So an auctioneer, a live auctioneer, professional auctioneer will know how to handle that uh, and to work with the audience to make sure that it sells for the appropriate price. Uh, and someone that's an amateur, I might have no idea on how to do that. And that's why you can't trust an amateur because they could put yourself in a sticky situation. Okay. Consignment rant over. So those are going to be your great live auction items. So now what are the not so good live auction items? Well, you know, art is, is, is one that could be be bad or could not be the best um, live auction items. Uh, jewelry uh, is another one. Jewelry is very, very subjective, again, to the you know beauties in the eye of the beholder. And some people might be like, oh, that is a beautiful you know, emerald ring. And some people might be like, I'm not going to have emerald rings no matter what, uh, no matter how much they are. Uh, so uh, and, and then jewelry also has a, a, a value tied to it. And then when that's in your live auction, a lot of people are going to look at it and they're like, OK, you know, those diamond earrings are worth ten thousand dollars and I'm going to bid five thousand because then I'm getting a deal at least. And everybody knows that there's ridiculous markup on jewelry. Personal services are another one uh, that can be a not so good live auction item. Um, there's some that can be really good. Um, so the other night I was at an auction and they had a $10,000 package to hair club for men, or it was very similar to that hair plugs. Yeah, these aren't plugs. These are real. But uh, anyways, uh, it was $10,000. You get to go get a treatment and you get to be a part of that. It's like, okay, friends, let's go. And it was silent. Nobody wanted to admit that they needed um, hair plug treatment and, and, and to be in a part of that. Now, again, we sold it. We you know sold it for $3,000 and it was an okay item, but it really sucked a lot of energy out of the room. Personal services probably would have done better in the silent auction uh, where people have a little bit more anonymity uh, within that versus um, the gentleman that ended up buying it knew he got a really good deal and he was just a just bald, 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 bald. So we'll see, uh, see what it looks like next year. Uh, other personal services, um, orthodontia can be good if you are at a elementary school, a private school, a private high school, anything like that where kids have to get braces. Um, parents are always looking for deals on that. And that's a great way for your auction donor, your auction item donor to, you know, get connected with you. Um, but if you're at like a regular big gala that is not school based, probably not a good idea. Uh, I've sold vasectomies, which actually went really good at a Montessori school uh, where we can kind of joke about that. Vasectomies at a Catholic, a Christian, or a Jewish school, not so much. Uh, so uh, you got to look again at what your audience uh, is out there. Uh, Botox. Yeah, Botox. That's a hot topic right now. And there's some organizations and some communities and audiences that really embrace that. Uh, we had one event where it was in Scottsdale and it was Botox and bubbles. And they did a whole thing where they uh, brought in uh, anestheticians uh, with that, uh, you know, are trained in Botox and they, you know, are able to uh, provide that treatment there. And then they're going to do some champagne and they're going to do some other things and create a whole experience around that. That sold really, really, really well. Uh, but now you might be in another part of the country for a different organization, uh, and it might not go over so well. So you got to kind of look at that. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's those personal services that are kind of um, iffy. Now, items, memorabilia, things like actual things, uh, again, are very subjective. Now, if it's a Rolex, um, yes, more likely than not that everybody would bid on a Rolex. Um, I'm not buying a Rolex, but there might be people that are Rolex collectors. As plain as it could be, probably sell one, but one that's like super bright gold and, and has a purple face and 
might not be the right item uh, for your live auction. Uh, jewelry as well, very subjective. Uh, if they were diamond studs and they're like a carat a piece, that can be good. Like, because most everyone will buy a couple carats of diamonds and love them to death. Now, a beautiful diamond necklace with a lot of ornate uh, different uh, pieces that are on it custom pieces um, can do good and not so good uh, i've seen uh, there's a private school I'll be working with this weekend that every year they have a jeweler that always creates a custom cross for this organization and it sells great because here we are these are conditions this is that depends that the particular item is matched with the mission that particular item is matched with the impact that the organization is having within the community. And it's part of that culture. So if you have that, and it is a part of your culture, then that probably would make it a good auction item. Now, if the artist has a connection to the school or your organization, they might make a good you know, item as well, too, because now you can kind of talk about the story of the jeweler or the artist and then their connection to your mission. And then uh, maybe they create a piece that then matches the mission and then inspires donors to give more than the value. And this is a perfect example. Two weeks ago, I was doing an event and we had ten thousand dollars to spend at a jewelry store. A fantastic jewelry store. Actually, um, I'll put in the link below. I've got a little video of this that I uh, had on uh, YouTube Shorts and Instagram uh, where I sell a $10,000 gift card for $12,000. That's right, $12,000. And Bobby, you must be the best auctioneer in the world. You sold a $10,000 gift card for $12,000. Well, yes, I am. But at the same time, uh, that is a perfect example to show that the donor really, really wanted to make sure that they gave to the organization. Uh, now, I'm not a tax accountant. I don't play one on the internet or I play one on TV. And don't take any of this as professional advice. This is just me uh, in my 20 years of experience that have been out there to see that anytime that an item, an auction item, you can't write off auction items 100% unless they go above the actual value of the item. So here, this particular individual got to buy a $10,000 gift card for $12,000 is able to write then off that $2,000 in excess of the value. All the other $10,000, they're not supposed to. But again, I'm not their accountant, whatever they wanna do, that's on them. And IRS, if you're listening, uh, we follow all the rules all the time, I promise, all the time. <laughs> so, but that's again, an example of how the live auction item can then sell above value. And I've seen paintings sell above value and I've seen jewelry sell above value. I've seen trips to Paris sell above value. I've seen all of these great things sell above value because there's the connection of the donor to the organization and the mission, the connection of the item to the organization and the mission, and then the auction buyer buyers, plural, have that connection to the mission and the capacity to purchase an item for more than the value, which is a great situation. You wanna create that all the time. And if you can create auction items that have that in obtainium feel to them, then they're truly priceless. And you can't buy anywhere else except for that night at your gala are your donors and your buyers able to buy that auction item and that's where we create that frenzied environment of a live auction and that's why a live auction works and that's where a professional auctioneer can really shine within that to bring as much value out of this auction item as they can and that's our job we want to get every dollar we can for this auction item while making a great experience and making sure that everybody's having a great time uh, at the event but it's really coming down to raise as much money as we can so looking at some items that are out there in the world and seeing some trendy items i mean where's all my swifties at whoa yeah, that's right. Taylor Swift is the new hottest. Well, no, she's been the hottest thing for many years. But now with this tour that she's on, uh, we've been selling Taylor Swift tickets for 5,000, 10,000, 15. Heck, we sold one the other night in Ireland for $30,000. That's right. And you can't get them anywhere else. And uh, all the shows are sold out in the United States. And now they're starting to go to Europe. There's going to be uh, an opportunity in Paris. But it also depends on the, you know, your, uh, 
area, your, you know, your market, where are you at? Now, are you in Los Angeles where there's some diehard Swifties? Yes. Now, if you were in St. There's in St. Louis, there's Swifties as well, too, um, but might not be able to bid as high as that. But that is definitely one of the trending items um, that are out there. Uh, again, the memorabilia, uh, the signed memorabilia, the signed golf flag, the signed baseball, the signed baseball bat or, you know, Rockies boxing gloves, different things like that. Um, if they are connected to the mission, they might be able to sell well. Uh, those items are way better suited for a silent auction. Uh, but in a live auction, um, I mean, we've sold Star Wars Legos that could be worth eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars for two, three thousand. Uh, and uh, just again, wasn't the right collectors, the right people in the room at that time uh, to purchase these memorabilia items. And it might be a trend in the world. I mean, people are living with less stuff. It's, it's, you know, minimalism is very true. It's very, uh, you know, apropos in our society these days, especially uh, in a city like New York City, where there's very small apartments and they don't have a lot of room for stuff. They would much rather expand to go out and experience the world uh, and then also make that donation to your organization um, or just make a pure gift, a uh, generous gift uh, to your organization and not get anything in return with that. That's a whole nother episode. And we've talked a lot about paddle raises and different things like that. But yes, the minimalism is coming down to it. Now, how do you get great live auction items? Well, we play what we call a dream game uh, with our clients uh, and their boards and their committees and their different volunteers to really dream up some ideas and kind of drum up that 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 inspiration or that connection to their network to where true story true story that uh, I have three degrees of separation to Patrick Swayze right right no Kevin Bacon and Kevin Bacon and Patrick Swayze <laughs> so because you know I know uh, an actor that worked with Kevin Bacon. I don't, I'm 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 in like a Roadhouse mood. Like, yo, I haven't seen Roadhouse forever. But yeah, Patrick Swayze and Kevin Bacon are both awesome. So if you have enough connections, you can then make that happen. And within that dream game, you start to dream up these great ideas. And then we go around and we find out who knows who knows who. And then we can start to create those those great live auction items. There's a dream game that we did one time uh, for a college foundation, and it was like two hundred thousand dollars of auction items. We figured out auction items for five years. But then we had to pick out which were going to be the best auction items for this auction audience on that night. Um, so finding those great items, creating that inobtaining moments, those are really a key for success. Uh, but then also being really unique and creative within this. Uh, there's actually tonight, uh, my lovely wife, Erin, co-host, who's not here. I wish she was here. Erin, I love you. Where are you? Come back to the podcast. Uh, she's going to be selling a finish your COVID project with uh, contractors that are offering up their services and their skills uh, and their expertise to help you finish whatever your COVID project might be. Maybe it's something around the yard. Maybe it's something around the house. Uh, maybe it's a bathroom you were trying to remodel and kind of got halfway there or something like that. Um, true story. I have to finish. Aaron's office. I told her I was going to do a built in. I'm a little handy, uh, but now that it's fundraising season, I haven't had a chance to go in and finish it yet. But as soon as fundraising se season's done, Aaron, I promise I will be finishing your built in. It will happen. And then we'll put up on the Instagram and everybody can see that. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. So they're doing the COVID, uh, finish your COVID projects. And then they're like, you know what? Let's up this a little bit. Let's make it a experience. Let's make it a party. Uh, let's bring out some pizza and bring out some beer from a local brewery. And let's get a dumpster and have a dumpster fire party. Good idea, right? Yeah, that's that. That's creativity at its absolute best. Thinking up some ways to create an experience to bring people together to make something that doesn't exist in the world, and that's why I really love working with uh, organizations like yours, with your committees, with your uh, board of directors, even your staff. There's so many great ideas to sit down and brainstorm, and we'll come up with some ideas for what great live auction items are. So. You've got great items. You've got the inobtainium. You've got the experiences. You've got all these great items that are out there. So another key for success is you have to market them. You have to market the items. You have to put them out there. Gone are the days where donors are going to an event and being like, oh, there's a trip to Paris. I'll buy that. It sounds cheap. 
they're not doing that anymore. They're being more savvy with their dollars. They're being uh, smarter with their donations. Um, they're being smarter with the organizations that they're working with. And if that donor or that audience member doesn't really have any information about that item, they're not going to buy it. No matter what, no matter the price, like, I just don't know. I don't know. So it's definitely putting that out there. You have to email it out. Uh, you have to physically hand sometimes that information to prospective auction donors. Um, you know, kind of repeat offenders are great uh, auction buyers that you can have conversations with about like, what do you want to see? Uh, what would you like to buy? Would you buy this? They'll give you the great feedback um, that's within that. And then uh, marketing against social media at the event marketing. I don't know why. I don't know why this is so hard to make auction posters. 24 by 36 foam core boards. Um, I actually did this the other night. I had the artwork printed at Staples on a flat sheet of paper. And then I bought the foam core and I just glued it right there. You don't have to. Yeah. Little auction hack right there to uh, have <laughs> your foam cores. But you can do this. You can print these these uh, auction uh, billboards essentially is what it is because when your donors are walking into the into the event, they want to see what's up for auction um, and they have to go in on their phones and be like, what is that? It's not very sexy right there. But when it's like big and bold uh, on that that auction uh, billboard, then people will see that. They'll know that the, that's the auction in there. Uh, it's in the live auction. Put that at the top. Um, I've got a link that we'll put in for you. It's a resource on best practices for live auction displays. So look at all these great resources we're giving you and solutions to making yourself have a great live auction. And then you have to have the PowerPoint. It has to be up on the screen. You have to have the bullet points. You have to have great pictures. Uh, and then you also have to put in specifics are, that are with that. And then again, have a professional auctioneer to to make sure you're maximizing the dollars that are within that. Now, there are, again, some maybes. We kind of talked about the art. Depends. We talked about the jewelry. Depends. We talked about the memorabilia. Depends. We talked about the particular experiences and staycations or vacations around the world. I mean, it all really depends. Again, trust your auctioneer. Have the conversation with them, and they will help guide you to which is the best auction items or even if you should have an auction. But in this case, we're still going to have an auction, which we love. We love auctions. They're so much fun and they're awesome. It's just, ah, oh, I love it. And that's that electricity that's helped to be built through the auctioneer and your audience. Now, golf. Let's talk about golf, golf courses. You might be in a space, here we are on Long Island, and there's some great world-class golf courses um, that are out here. And there's a few that are absolutely private that you can't get into. Like you seriously got to know a guy, know a guy that died that knows a guy that willed it to his brother. But there's also opportunities at fundraising auctions in which uh, we just sold one the other night. It was a round for three because you had to play with the member of one of the most high profile golf courses on Long Island, if not the entire United States. I mean, you're literally playing on the sound, the Long Island sound, which is, oh, it's beautiful. But that item sold really well because again, you don't have access to that. Not anybody can just walk in off the street and go play golf there. And another example is Liberty National in New Jersey, looking at the Statue of Liberty. Like you can't get on there. You can't call for a team time. So there's people that will play in golf tournaments just to play that course because of how unobtainium it truly is. And at those auctions, uh, they'll sell a foursome at, at the uh, Liberty National and it sells for great money because again, you can't get anywhere else except for that night. Now, alcohol, Pappy Van Winkle will always sell great at an auction, but you have to check your uh, local regulations uh, to make sure that you can sell alcohol within your auction. Um, there's even opportunities where I've seen the motivations from the buyers that we've sold glasses of water before for thousands of dollars. But Bobby, why would they buy a glass of water for thousands of dollars? Because the donor wants to give. They want to be a part of your mission. They want to be a part of that fundraising fuel that keeps your mission going and makes that impact. And yes, they will buy a glass of water. Yes, they will buy shots for their table for thousands of dollars. Yes, they will buy a uh, uh, an autographed from your, you know, celebrity that's there, your sports star or whatever for thousands and thousands of dollars, uh, where 
normally it would might not even sell for for anything in normal cases and that's why fundraising auctions work because we're making that connection of the organization and the mission and the impact that they are having with the donors remember our ideal donor from previous episodes they have a connection to the cause and they also have that capacity to give and the willingness to give and 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 when you have those you know, great mission, great organization, donors, capacity, willingness to give, and then an auction item that is in Obtainium. You can't get it anywhere else. And it was properly marketed to your specific audience. You're going to set yourself up for a successful event. Oh, did I mention you have to use a professional auctioneer as well? Um, yes, I know there's some great amateurs that are out there and I love them. I love them. I love them. But this is like 0.01%. Are amateurs that are actually good. 99.9999% are, yes, hire a professional, invest in your professional, make sure you're going to raise as much money as you can with these auction items and make sure that all of your guests and your donors are going to have a great time within that and give them great live auction items. Your donors are donating their time. They're giving you their time, their most valuable asset in the world. They are giving you their time on a Friday night, a Saturday night, you know, three, four, five, six hours. And even before that sometimes, because they got to get ready and they got to get the babysitter and they got to get a car. And sometimes they got to stay over there. So they're spending money to come to your event, to spend money, to give you money at your event. And then they're giving you their time. So they're trusting you with their time. So please make it a good experience for them. Give them great auction items to buy that they can't find anywhere else. Give them an opportunity to network with wonderful people in the community uh, that are at your event. And then make them feel good at the event and beyond the event with proper impact marketing and uh, your mission marketing. Get those out there. Great storytelling and all of that. And make sure that experience is absolutely electric. So we talked about great auction items. We talked about not so great auction items and we talked about maybes, depends and whatnot. So friends, my Alexa is now telling me that it's time for dinner. So it's time for dinner. But I want to thank all of you so much for spending some time with me, investing some time in with me because that shows that you are wanting to make a better auction for you all. But yes, you can follow us right up there uh, at Star Auctions, at Bobby D Auctioneer, at Inspire Hearts, at Call to Auction, all of the things. See right there, look at, boom. Good job, producer, on the ball today. And you can find us on TikTok, a couple of auctioneers. We're going to up our TikTok game here coming into the end of the year. So friends, thank you again. My name is Bobby D. Uh, please leave us a review on Apple, on your podcast players. Please give us a thumbs up. Smash the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. And if you're on LinkedIn, please connect with us. Ask any questions that you might have about any topic within Fundraising Gallus that you might have. We're here to help. If we don't know the answer, we will find an expert and we will bring them on very soon. Oh, speaking of experts, next week we're going to have two great podcasts. We have Kelly Russell who wrote the book on benefit auctions. Well, a book on benefit auctions. She's going to be talking about that. And then I've got Rob G who writes a philanthropy article uh, for the Chronicle of Philanthropy about events. He's coming up here very, very soon. So stay tuned. We've got great things coming right here at the Heart of the Gala podcast. Thanks again. Go out, find those awesome auction items, market them, get an awesome auctioneer and have an electric event. Raise a lot of money and go out and continue to make that impact in the world. Again, Bobby D, thank you all so much and go out, aspire to inspire. All right, thanks again, everyone. We'll see you next time on Heart of the Gallup Podcast.